Hi guys, Lord of Ponto here with another video for Rise of Empires, Ice and Fire. Today it's part 5 of my guide to Eden and in this video we're going to be talking about combat on the Eden map. So how is it going to be different compared to your previous Reign of Chaos seasons? Well there are actually quite a few differences for when you're on the Eden map. Obviously you're not going to be having your alliance centres as the focus of combat either. And um, with the map, you're going to find that basically access points, i.e. the gates, so these things here, are going to be a point of combat. And of course, either the towns, capitals, or potentially even the ancient temple in the middle um, would be flashpoints for combat. And the reason for that is that those are the elements that are going to give you your occupation value, which will get you your rewards at the end of the season. We are into the penultimate week of our first season, and um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens in the coming week. Um, generally, there is more kind of movement in the last few days because everyone's going to be scrambling to try and uh, take those elements to increase their occupation value. But let's just talk about some basic mechanics um, in the game. As you can see, obviously, we do have the resource tiles as normal, and um, you're going to have, you're going to be wanting to take territory, your own territory. Um, first, you're going to obviously want to take gates and move through them into the next area, um, so that you can then explore and potentially take more resource tiles. The closer you get to the centre of the map, the higher the level of tiles are, uh, similar to the layout that you would get on um, in state on a normal previous Reign of Chaos season. And um, particularly in this central section, you'll see there's a high density of tiles for you to try and explore uh, between levels 13 and 16 in this area, 12 and 16 in this area. Um, so. If your alliance has the power to get through to this area, that's going to be beneficial for you in, in developing your loyalty up to potentially be able to take one of the bigger buildings or even, well, try and get the ancient temple, which requires 8,000 loyalty. So obviously with tiles, there's still the same options as before. Uh, if you have any of your own guild tiles, you can garrison with your troops uh, to protect that. And quite often what you'll find is that, for instance, if you are get up against an opposing alliance at a gate, um, a lot of people will uh, place their castles close to the gate and they will then take tiles and garrison the tiles to form a barrier against the opponent to slow them down. Uh, you can also potentially um, garrison the gate as well. Um, but again, and if that's with the aim of, um, you know, protecting it from being taken by an opposing alliance. So that's in terms of tile combat. There's not a lot new uh, in terms of uh, how the kind of how you do it. Uh, you still have to move tiles adjacent, etc., uh, and move across the across the world map. Um, bit by bit, tile by tile, and, your tile, and you still have a tile capacity uh, in your territory, which you can increase by uh, taking higher level tiles and doing the challenges that that doesn't change. One thing, one key element that is very important, um, and I did touch on it in my first video when we were going through the rules of Eden, um, and that is will. So when you're going to take any kind of um, let's just say we we're looking at this. If we go to Occupy and, and go to the Legion screen, you'll see in this top right-hand corner, will 150 no damage decrease. And if we click on the info icon, will affects troop damage. Will minus one with every one kilometer marched. So you start at 150. So if you're attacking any target, and by target in this sense, I mean a... Um, in reinforced tile or a castle itself then within 50 kilometers of your own castle your troops will still be fighting at max damage at 100% damage 
But as you can see here, Will minus one with every one kilometer marched, and when Will is lower than 100, with each minus one, Will troop damage is minus 0.7%. So if you're more than 150 kilometers, if your target is more than 150 kilometers from your castle, your troops will have minus 70% damage when they hit that target. So that is something very key to bear in mind. If you're hitting a reinforced tile or another castle, your troops, and it's more than 150 kilometers away, your troops will have minus 70% damage in that battle. And unless you are a very strong account and you're coming up against a very weak account, then that's not gonna work out well for you. So that, that is a key change in the element and that is why like positions and location uh, particularly if you're going up in in a battle, um, can be can be like an absolute game changer in Eden with that with that mechanic in in the game. Now, obviously, you heard me mention if you're going to attack a castle, and of course, in normal Reign of Chaos, when you're in a Reign of Chaos war, you can't directly attack a castle. You can use dragon shouts on them. You can use a destroyer shout. Uh, you can use a Reign of Chaos shout but you can't physically siege the castle with your own troops. In Eden, you can. So if you, again, you the, the caveat to that is you need a tile adjacent to that castle. So if you do have a tile adjacent to the castle, you can attack that castle. Now there are two different elements to this. Firstly, if the player is logged in in the game, uh, so let's have a look if anyone is here we go so DJ White he is currently logged in on the Eden map you can see that his co castle it's a normal castle image but if next to him got to go and Lord Robin they are ghost images they're out of the they're out of the map so one key thing is uh, what's that tile BWC so say if um, Royal War Kitty great name um, attack uh, wanted to attack dj now he has a tile adjacent to him he can attack and siege dj like you would in a normal kill event and troops if uh, dj's got troops in there they're going to die uh, potentially um so that's what you want to uh that's a key consideration and also that's why it's really important that um, in Reign, Reign of Chaos, you always exit when you're finished playing on the game live. You want to exit back out to your home state so that your castle becomes a ghost castle. Now again, there's a few um, different elements to this. So usually in a normal siege during like kill events, for instance, or um, you would, if your castle reaches zero fortification, you would get zeroed and you'll be teleported somewhere else in eden it doesn't quite work like that you don't get auto teleported somewhere else what happens is your castle becomes fallen now a castle can become fallen either if it is in the game like dj is now or even if you are ghosted out of the game so what we'll do is we'll just have a look at maverick here so as you can see maverick um, one of my accounts um, I haven't I just kind of used it to set it up see on here it shows it's C, it's a C24 but I've actually upgraded him to C25 since I was last in the game and you can see here that though Maverick has a hundred percent fortification it's got this image on top and that means that in the last 24 hours you can see it says Maverick Pond taken side savages and Maverick Pond has been attacked while it was logged out of the game so you won't lose any troops or resources but what does happen is that if you look these four tiles that make up the location of the castle are glowing a different color and they are actually now the possession of savages so they what happens is if you make a castle fall and it will last for 24 hours and those tiles in effect join the savage that whichever alliance has has attacked and, and uh, made the castle fallen 
Another interesting thing about this is that if a player wanted to now, uh, from Savages, if a player wanted to, they could actually uh, reinforce Garrison one of these four tiles. Um, and then if a different castle, so say if I, uh, yeah, say if it, it, Maverick was in a different alliance, um, or guild, sorry, um, then and you would, and I attacked it with my main, my troops would come up against the troops of the Savages player who has garrisoned on those tiles first. So they will, if you, you can garrison these tiles to help again protect your, uh, at the end of the day, you're protecting the, the location of which you have taken. So that is, um, that is an interesting difference with Eden. So just to clarify again, if your castle is logged out of the game, you're, you're off the map, you've exited the map, then your castle can still be attacked, but you won't lose troops, you won't lose resources, but your tiles underneath the castle will become the possession of the opponent, under the possession of the opponent once your castle is fallen. And you can clear a fallen status in your castle as well if you log back in. But of course you're risking potentially getting hit again. Uh, and if you're logged in and get hit, then you will lose troops. So it's just, um, it's balancing that out. So those are kind of the key um, differences, uh, particularly obviously this will element and, and fallen. Um, the other thing to think about is you can shield your your town and you just do that by selecting town buffs and you see here there's castle shield and you can click use and it will say here it takes now bear in mind it takes two hours to charge and then it will give you an eight hour protection time now with this shield that means that if you do log out of the Eden map and you have the shield activated, then you are protected from being attacked. You can't lose your castle to, to that fallen status. Uh, but of course, it only lasts for eight hours and there is a bit of a cooldown after that eight hours finishes as well. So that is something to bear in mind. Another interesting element is that if you have a town, you can shield the town as well. And uh, again, that will last for, uh, I think it's eight hours, I might be wrong. Um, and that will protect the town so it can't be taken by a rival alliance. Um, so, you know, maybe if you someone is um, moving towards your town, you don't have a lot of members of your guild online, you can um, select the shield again. It has a cooldown. I think it's a one hour cooldown for the town. Uh, sorry, it's a one hour like charging cycle for the town. And um, that will give you protection for a period of time. The other thing kind of combat related, which is interesting, so around each um, town or capital and the ancient ruin, you'll see that there is the white zone here. And within the white zone, so if this, with this town being taken, um, it means that you can't make four, you can't take four tiles next to each other and teleport into that zone if it's not your town. If it is your town, you can protect it and you can teleport in. But if you're an opponent, you have to attack the town from outside. You're going to have to move your castle to outside the white zone, the city zone, town zone. And um, if you are the host guild of that town, you can make a platform in this zone and it will only take one hour uh, to form uh, instead of the usual two hours if you're making a platform somewhere else. And that's really the last thing I wanted to talk about is platforms. So as I've showed in a previous video, I think in part three, um, I showed how you make platforms so that you can move across the map because you can't just teleport using your usual random or advanced teleports. Uh, you have to make four tiles adjacent to each other in a square. And then you have to select teleport on there and, and place your teleport pad. So if we go into uh, Reign of Chaos on a structure, you'll see I've got Relocation Point, which is the new the new element, uh, which is different to before. And you'll see it's building at the moment and one hour, 28 minutes left. So that is your teleport pad. And that will allow you to move. Now, another good strategy um, in terms of 
uh, when you're in combat, you're potentially going to have a battle with an opponent is that, um, you know, if you're losing that battle and potentially you're getting close to being attacked where your castle could lose troops or you could, you know, potentially be catastrophic for you. It's always good to have a separate teleport pad readily made in a different location where you can fall back to retreat if necessary. So that would be another tip from me is that you always have a teleport pad available so that you can move retreat if, if required. Um, and that is another good tactic. And also, of course, you know, using the actual barriers on the map. So you'll notice quite often that um, a lot of alliances, there will be multiple members grouped together uh, behind a wall and they will be attacking um, a different area where they've had tiles, but you'll have that gap uh, so that you can you're, you're less likely to actually get into a physical war where you're attacking castles. But don't get me wrong, there have been plenty of battles in this season where um, big alliances have gone up against each other and um, you know they've made tile chains to the opponent's castles and then they are attacking each other with their legions. Uh, you know, there's, re there's been plenty of reinforced tiles, etc. So there is plenty of opportunity uh, for war in on the Eden map. It just depends how... Uh, you as a group of states have developed over time and whether there are grudges against each other and what kind of coalitions are built ready for Eden, um, you know, whether some alliances uh, join join together uh, in, in guilds, which is what you can do. So that's definitely, it's a diff it's an interesting element. And um, as I say, we're, we've got, an, we're in the last two weeks now. So what happens in the last two weeks is, is gonna be interesting. And just a little thing to note, so as you can see here, TC1990, you can see that he does, he has activated his shield, he exited the game, and that's what the shield looks like. So if you see a castle that has this um, glowing shield over it, then you will not be able to attack it and make it fallen. So there we go, guys. That is some info on Eden combat for you. Um, so just those key points to remember is that you cannot teleport at any point unless you do have this teleport made. So that's always good to have one of those spare. Um, you will have tile battles, which is gonna be key. And what you've got to remember is this element on will that if you are more than 150 kilometers from your target, whether that is a reinforced tile or a castle, your troops will actually be hitting those targets with 70% less damage, which is going to, you know, have a big impact on your ability to win those battles, unless you're a very strong account up against weaker accounts. Um, and those are two key elements, really. And of course, don't forget that if you're going to log out of Eden and you're, you know, overnight you're going to bed, then you can pop on your shield to protect your your town in that location. And it is important to keep an eye on on what's going on what's progressing in eden because it is 24 7 it doesn't stop um you can go to bed in the morning and wake up and find that uh you know a rival alliance has moved several hundred kilometers they've taken a gate they're they're you know attempting uh, to take your town or enter into your take over your territory um so it is very key i would again suggest that you have people from different regions around the world in your guild so that you'll always have a presence in the map. Um, and certainly for us, we've been using Line, we use WhatsApp, Viber, um, anything that uh, anything that can help us communicate and stay in touch. Um, you know, you might not, obviously we all understand that we, real life comes first and you're not always gonna be on, on the game, but by just having, uh, being able to use those kind of apps as well, um, and communicating clearly through your alliance messages as well um, of where your targets are, who the enemy is, what area you're trying to clean. Communication is really, really key in Eden. So there we go, guys. That is um, that is combat in Eden. Uh, I hope you found the video helpful. Sorry, I don't actually have any actual combat to show you at the moment. It's, it's a little bit of a quiet spell on the map for us um, right now. But I hope you found all the information I've given you useful. And for those of you that haven't started yet, um, it's given you a better idea of, of what's going to happen and, and things to factor in when you're when you're starting out in your season. 
So um, thank you very much for watching the video. I really appreciate the support. Please don't forget to subscribe, ring that bell, share my channel in game on your province chat, alliance chat, and of course in your social media. And um, thank you very much for watching. Uh, later in the week, I'll be continuing my season hero guide. Um, I've got Pom Farm 2 finishing zone commemoration on Wednesday as well, which is going to be cool. That's another account that I can progress forward, hopefully. And um, I've got so many requests for videos as well. I'll be trying to fulfill those. So I, someone's asked me to do a video on, on Kill Event, for instance, at the weekend. Hopefully I'll be able to um, get that sorted for you guys on, on Saturday and show some good strategy for that as well. So please do keep on watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much, and I will see you soon.